Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how in Godot you can use a Area 2D node in order to add gravity to objects that would enter that node, such as sucking in pickups to the center point of the node, which could be handy for things like a player character that wants to pick up those pickup items. So first I want to show you one of my pickup scenes, the objects that would be sucked in by the gravity and how you might set this up for an example. So if we take a look at this scene, it's pretty straightforward, relatively simple. At the top, the main component, if you wanted to work with gravity, is using a rigid body 2D. Or if you were doing a 3D game, of course, you would use a rigid body 3D instead. And of course, we have the sprite component, a collision shape that is attached to the rigid body 2D. And you can see I'm making this a very, very tiny collision shape here. Uh, the reason for that is that other objects that might be on the same layer would bump into each other if you have a larger collision shape, and I want them to more or less overlap each other. So that's why I've taken uh, the circle shape here and just shrank it to a radius of one pixel, which gives it a diameter of two pixels. So very small, obviously way smaller than the sprite. And then lastly, down here at the bottom, that is more specific to my own game, uh, you have a pickup component. So this script allows the actual scene to be picked up and added as a resource to the player's inventory and the way that happens is by attaching a take pickups component to the player so that's how we grab this scene remove it and add a resource to the player's inventory and so i have those scripts in my item drops plugin that i've been working on but that's not needed for the gravity itself to work so the gravity gets applied to the rigid body 2d so if we look at the rigid body 2d uh things that you are going to want to care about would include stuff like the gravity scale. So you actually need the gravity scale to be set to a value above zero. As you can see, this also influences additional gravity vectors applied by area 2Ds, which is exactly what we're doing uh, with our player's gravity zone script. But this also means you are applying the default gravity of the game as well to this object. So if I go to my project settings and we look at uh, general and I'll just type in gravity here, physics 2D, you can see that I've taken the default gravity and I've set it to zero because I am developing in a top down perspective. So a top down game is not going to have gravity where your character is basically falling through the roads and stuff. So in this type of game, you wouldn't actually have gravity because of the perspective. It's not like a platformer where down is actually where your character would be going down towards the center of the earth, but down would be more like going down the road. So for a top-down game, I would take the gravity and set that to zero in the project settings. But then you need the gravity scale to still be set to one so that area 2Ds that have that gravity influence will still affect the pickups. Okay, so then let's go dig down the other settings and what's important. So mass distribution, nothing really in there. But in deactivation, we want to be careful about using the sleeping settings. So if a rigid body 2D enters sleeping mode, then forces like gravity are going to stop applying to those objects. So if you have gravity enabled and it's not sucking in the pickup item, then it might be in sleep mode. So I would turn uh, can sleep off and sleeping off, of course, so that the gravity can still work on that. Also, you might want to consider turning lock rotation on. If you don't want your sprites to be rotating around the screen as a result of gravity, that is uh, very dependent on what kind of object you are adding gravity to. If it's more like a spaceship game, maybe you still want the rotation on. But in this case, I just want the sprites to keep this uh, posture no matter what happens or how they're moving around the screen. So uh, let's go a little further down. So then further down in linear, uh, there's a setting called damp here. So if we add gravity to a item and that item happens to leave the gravity zone and there's no other forces acting on it, then it's going to keep moving because there's nothing adding uh, friction or dampening to the object. So if you take damp and you turn this on to some positive value, then once your pickup leaves the radius of the gravity, if that happens, then it'll eventually come to a stop, which I think is probably what you want. You probably don't want your items floating off into space and never stopping until they've already exited the tile map. So that would be a little weird. And uh, I think that's about it we need from these rigid body 2D settings. But down here in collision object, what's going to be important is uh, setting a collision layer and a collision mask for your items that you want to be affected by gravity. So in this case, I've defined a layer six as pickups. So anything I want to interact with the pickups in the game as a physics force will occur on layer six. 
So if I come over here to the right and I click on the drop down and edit layer names, uh, you can see that I have a bunch of layers set up in the game already. So ground would be more like for tile map collisions, player and enemy when I want to check hit boxes. If I'm hitting a target on the enemy layer, I can target those layers. But then for pickups, if I want to apply gravity only to items you can pick up on the screen, then having another layer defined for that can be helpful. So when you have your objects on layer six and mask layer six, then that means your gravity area needs to target layer six. So let's jump over to my player scene now and we'll take a look at this. So lots of components here, but the stuff that matters is really up here at the top. Um, I'll just try to close everything else. So we have the pickup gravity and you'll notice this doesn't have a custom script attached to it. It's just an area 2D because area 2Ds have gravity forces uh, built in as an option. So you can see here for space override, I have this set to combine. So using combine mode means that if there's other forces that are acting on the objects inside of the zone, it's going to add the force to those objects and any other forces are, and then any other forces on those objects are still going to apply to it. Uh, there may be a case where you'd want to replace it if you want these areas to completely control the um, physics of that other object entirely. But in this case, I'd want to allow other possible forces to be combined. So that's why that's in there. If you have the mode set to point, then that's going to mean that the center point for this node, the pickup gravity area 2D node, is going to be basically where the gravity is going towards, which uh, makes sense in this case because I want items to be sucked into the player. And then the point unit distance is the halving point for where the forces become weaker. So I think it's like um, every 30 pixels, it becomes half the gravity. So it's strongest when you're closest to the center and then it gets weaker as it goes out. Uh, that's actually optional. You can have it set to zero if you want the gravity to always have the same amount of force. But this just means the closer you get to the center, the stronger it's going to be. The point center is the offset from uh, where the node is located. So it's already at zero, zero, basically right on the character's body. I have no need to change that. So zero, zero works fine. And then the gravity is the actual uh, speed of force, the amount of pixels per second you want to bring items into, not accounting for the point unit distance. So this would be the gravity at its strongest of 200 pixels per second coming into the center point. And of course, you can customize that. So uh, everything else here, linear damp, angular damp, and audio bus, you really don't need to play around much with. But uh, the last thing that does matter is on collision, you want to make sure that it is masking layer six. So if you don't already know, uh, mask means it's going to look for items that have the collision layer six checked and only items on that layer are going to be affected by this area 2D. So basically it needs to be a rigid body 2D on uh, layer six, and then it will be affected by this area 2D's gravity. So obviously separating things into their own layers is important. We probably don't want the gravity to absorb enemies into the center. So we're not going to target layer three, though we could. If I check uh, mask layer three, then now we can absorb uh, pickups and enemies into the center. Sounds kind of OP, probably breaks the game, but something you can do. So just uh, keep in mind, separating layers allows you to have more control over things. So that is pretty much actually all you need to do, really. And this does not specifically apply to just pick up items. It's really just any scene that's on the right layer that has a rigid body 2D. Uh, you can have the gravity apply as long as the gravity scale is set to a positive value. And of course, uh, as an area 2D, it's a collision object 2D. So you have to define a shape for the gravity zone. So you can see my pickup gravity shape. I've set this to a circle shape. Uh, it's very clearly defined here by the circle around the player. So anything that's within these bounds is going to be affected by the gravity. Any rigid body 2Ds that have gravity and are on that collision layer. So if I wanted to expand the uh, size of the shape and absorb things that are further away, I could just expand this or shrink it, uh, whatever I need to do. You can also use other shapes. It does not have to be a circle. Uh, though I think in a lot of cases, a circle does make more sense than a square. But that's basically the setup there. And uh, of course, make sure that uh, your rigid body 2D also has its own collision shape. So when the gravity is applying, the uh, collision shape here of the rigid body 2D has to be within this zone for the gravity to apply. So if you have no collision shape, then the physics obviously aren't going to apply there. So if we go ahead and hit play, I'll increase the uh, game time so that we can have the pickups spawn here a little bit faster. And I'll have the items enter the zone by uh, walking over towards them. And you can notice that as they get closer, the gravity gets stronger. That's uh, that 
point gravity setting, or what it was called, uh, point unit distance. And then the actual picking up of being added to the inventory, that, that is, of course, just coming from the take pickups component in combination with the pickups component. But yeah, that's basically the gist there. If I uh, add a bunch more stuff in, it's still going to apply equally. Doesn't matter how many items are inside of the gravity zone, as long as they're in the gravity zone. So if I duplicate things like a madman, now let's select these four and I'll move copies down like that. Then let's make more trees as well. I'll move all of these trees over here. So if we go ahead and run the scene one more time, you'll see it doesn't matter how many pickups you have. As long as they have the right rigid body 2D and they're within the radius, they're going to get uh, the physics applied to them in the same way. But one thing you'll notice is that uh, despite there being a lot of pickups, they don't really collide with each other, even though they're on the same layer. And that's because I made the collision shape really small for those pickup items. If I had made them larger, then they would collide into each other and, and they would prevent each other from occupying the same space. So that's something you can consider uh, when making your pickups really small like this and in terms of the actual physics shape. So there's not really too much more to say about that. That's basically the gist of how you apply uh, gravity inside of your game. Obviously, you could do things like um, make the gravity negative 200 pixels if you want it to be a reverse gravity, more like a uh, push away effect. So if we go to this now, then you can see I can keep all of these pickups away from me. <laughs> which is kind of interesting in its own way. So that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial on how to use Area 2D Gravity, at least in a 2D game, inside of Godot 4. I hope all of you found this tutorial helpful. If you're interested in the actual pickups mechanics, I'll be doing a tutorial on my item drops plugin really soon. But for now, that's pretty much it for this video. So thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future Godot game development content.